Hello everyone! As we entered the effects portion of the course, the general question from you guys was, can we now create particle-based simulations in After Effects? Things such as fire and smoke and so on. And the answer is yes, but remember that After Effects is a 2.5D program. It's not, truly, it's not truly 3D. And what that means is that these particle systems will reside, reside in their own separate layers. In order to combine them into a cohesive final result, you need to use compositing. They do not simply interact with one another. So with that said, we introduced the CC Pixel Poly um, filter a couple of weeks ago and uh, in the rotoscoping exercise, and that's how we are able to create things like this, where we actually do things, make things explode into little particles in 3D space. And as a refresher, let me click on that layer here. We apply the CC Pixel Poly. And remember that that filter does not recognize your motion blur switch. That's why we apply the CC, fo uh, CC Force motion blur. Now, uh, this filter by default gives you good enough results. I seldom find myself changing the settings on, the, on that filter. You can if you want to increase the amount of blur samples, but I seldom do it. it they usually work well. It's almost like a um, imitating what the motion blur does, the switch does under regular circumstances. So I usually just simply drop it and that's it. Now for the rest of what we have going on here, let's go ahead and turn off the little particle systems that I created for the ball. I masked out the ball, as you can see, this ball is basically on its own. And I just simply tracked it uh, by using my a combination of mask tracking and uh, you can rotoscope it as well if you want to or you could animate the mask frame by frame as necessary. So you have the ability to um, do that and <clears throat> what's happening here is that you notice that as the ball goes I have basically created when I mask that out from my original footage you will notice that I have a hole in my footage. So now how did I fill out that hole? Just like in Photoshop you have content aware fill capabilities in After Effects. So let me go ahead and select the layer that has that mask. And then what I want to do is go to Window, Content Aware Fill right here. And that opens up this window for you, which allows you to, just like in Photoshop, select an area and remove a, an object or a surface or blend something on the edges um, based on the mask that you have created. So if I click on that drop down menu here under content aware, I can switch my option just like you do in Photoshop to select what type of, let's call it tracking or a content aware filling you need to do. Now you can also bring in a reference frame, which means if you had a frame that you have soloed out or that you have frozen or that you basically where you would have the exact same feel of grass without the player or the ball, and you wanted to use that as a reference, you can load that into this composition. However, we do not have that for this particular video. We simply have, we all the footage has the ball and the player in it. So I'm gonna let the AI in the filter do its thing. I'm gonna let it figure out how to fill that out. Now you can select whether you wanna have this um, content aware fill follow the entirety of your composition by choosing entire duration of the layer that you have selected sorry, for the length of the layer, or the work area. In this case, I'm, I'm going to create content aware fill for the work area. And with that selected, this works by soloing the layer. Now, notice that if I turn everything on, I don't see the mapping, the actual mask in my preview fill target. So I need to make sure that I either solo the layer that I want to, uh, that I want to auto um, fill, or content aware fill, sorry, or I can turn everything else off in the composition and simply have that layer. Now with that done and with the mask uh, set up, and you don't have to have only one mask, you can do this with several masks. So uh, the more masks you add, they will appear on, under this area here and you can see what is being tracked. Let me go ahead and uh, go ahead and just generate autofill really quick. I'm just with the default settings. I'm gonna click, click generate autofill and you'll notice that the layer is analyzing and you'll notice that basically it created a new layer for me up here, which is basically a sequence of frames that autofills based on the information that was there. So the grassy area looks really well, but when it comes to getting around the arm where the ball starts hitting the arm of the player and the leg, you see a bit of deformation, okay? And that usually, that's normal because the program is, the AI is looking at the information inside that mask 
at this point the mask would be in that area and you'll notice that basically it's take, picking up on the information on the arm on the information on the on the leg on the shin all that stuff is being included to resolve what to fill in there now in most cases you know simply having footage that covers this such as <clears throat> the ball let me turn on the ball um that we have here sorry the the actual let me bring in this down here below <clears throat> my ball layer you'll notice that turning it on automatically creates cover over that and if i were to play this back most likely it would be almost not visible but in some instances it becomes really visible like here so how do we fix something like this well let me just go ahead and remove that autofill that i had created a second ago this one and go back to my layer, turn the ball layer back off, turn, select my layer again. What I want to do is I want to reduce the amount of alpha expansion. I want to make sure that I am as close as possible to my mask. So I will bring that down to about one, let's say. And once again, generate autofill. Now you'll notice that the deformation is a little bit less when I do that. And so now if I go ahead and activate my ball layer, let me bring that the autofill layer that was created below the ball. You'll notice that it's almost not visible anymore. If I scrub, I still see some deformation, and that's only natural. Like I say, like I said, the AI doesn't have a reference frame. So it determines that it, it has to include the pixels in the arm and the leg in order to solve this. But when I play this back, it's almost not visible. Let me turn on the other two layers for the explosion. And you can tell that the thing is basically seamless. You can now focus on it because that's you know about it. But if you were to run this really fast, you could barely see that. So it's a combination of things. You need to keep on playing around with those settings until you get to a happy medium result for what you're trying to solve. Okay, so that is pixel poly. Now let's take a look at uh, another... Uh, shattering or par particle effect that we can work with in After Effects, and that is the shatter effect. Now, the shatter effect, in this case, let me go ahead and show you what this is right here. Let me turn off the filter, and this is just simply a solid, and the solid basically has nothing. It's just a circle with a gradient. Now, let me uh, activate shatter, and let me reset the settings for shatter. Shatter you can find here under your effects and presets start typing shatter to filter it out and that's what comes up and by default this is what you see you basically see a wireframe wall of bricks that is falling now, that's why most people get turned off when they look at this they're like oh, okay well that's cool and i can create particles with that but i mean that's really not solving my issue i want my uh shape to break into little pieces so first things first what you're looking at is what we call wireframe and forces which is going to basically demo for you what this filter is going to do. Now, you can work under those conditions, or you can change it to rendered. Now, when you click on render, what happens is it shows you the artwork that you're working with and how it shatters based on the filter settings. Now, this, is, this at least is showing me what the end result is going to be. I can at this point then choose what to... Uh, what shape to use from the presets that I, that I have here. So I can go ahead and switch to many of these things. And a lot of them are cool, you know, but most of them look, uh, for lack of a better word, digitally generated. They look mechanical. So this might not be what we're looking at. Glass is one that most people default to because it looks like little pieces. And that's great. We want to, uh, when we're trying to... Uh, to demolish something we want particles to look like this we want them to be you know little pieces of whatever was there before and so that works really well but might not be uh let me actually turn off my cc force motion blur so you can see that basically they look like that and then i since this does not recognize my motion blur switch i have to use that <coughs> force motion blur <coughs> sorry so now what we want to do is, okay, well, this works well in, uh, you know, for most instances, but again, once you do it two or three times, everything's going to start looking the same. So how can I generate custom-made particles? How can I make this look different? This um, mapping, the mapping used for breaking this, basically mapping being the different pieces that make, out, that make up that um, shape or the different shapes that break this into pieces, come from 
an actual layer the, for, or information from a layer. So for example, let me go here and um, go to this called, uh, to this uh, composition called uh, Shatter Comps, Custom Maps. And now you'll notice that I have the exact same settings on this. The only difference being that under the uh, pattern, I have chosen something called Custom. Now, Custom basically allows me to select a custom layer as my map for what needs to how this is going to break. In this case, I have something called Shatter Map One, which which is if I open it up from my project window, it's basically a composition with four different solids. And notice that they all they have different colors. This is very important. Shatter works based on the information provided by either luminosity and or color changes within a layer. So in this case, my map is made of four pieces. That Therefore, when I use this different four colors to map uh, as a map, as a custom map for my shatter, it will break my layer into four different pieces. Okay, so that is important. Now, where this gets interesting is, okay, so now I have the ability to do this, but now that forces me to go in and change all of my layers into different colors or into different pieces or into separate layers. And that is not really the case. Let me go ahead and switch this map for Shatter Map 2. Now, Shatter Map 2 is something that I created by using um, a couple of filters. The first one was Fractal Noise, which we, we've already seen in class. And the second one is Colorama. Okay, so let me default the Fractal Noise. Let me reset it. So you see that is the little fog that we were we were working with. And let me close this one and go back to my custom shapes. Now you'll notice that when I did that, basically my light and dark information within the pro within that shatter map two is what it's guiding my the way this breaks. Let me go ahead and create a new viewer. And I'm going to make sure that once locked, the final one, I'm gonna go to the map here. Notice that when I make changes to my map over here, my shatter shapes. Uh, 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 my, my shatter uh, effect changes the shapes of what is how it's being broken into pieces. Let me go ahead and maybe change my contrast and my brightness, bring it down or bring it up. You'll notice that the brighter things get, the less they break. So the closer to white you are in your map, the less it's going to shatter. So you want to introduce some kind of contrast in a lot of gray or activate colors. And then that truly starts looking for the different little pieces within and by the colors. I use, I use Colorama to colorize that map and notice how that basically broke this thing into a ton of pieces. So that's how that works. You basically can use either light and dark uh, information or color information to affect the way the shatter map works. Okay, now let me go ahead and show you what this does when you go ahead, when you start working with the shatter, you can go ahead and utilize either the default camera within your program, within the filter, sorry, or you can go ahead and create your own camera. And with that camera selected, you will notice that if I rotate this by changing in my shatter camera system, from camera position to comp camera, I can go ahead and control this in 3D space. And notice that the shattering actually explodes outward based on the force and the different settings that we have for that shatter. So the, the amount of force that we have for force one, force two being the thing that creates kind of like a wind or a directional force. Uh, what that is, let me show you under this shatter here. Let me go ahead and Close this one. And force two basically allows you to push your particles from one point in a direction. And you can change that, obviously, to push them around, to push the particles around. That's force two. Force one is the speed at which they take off from the center where they're being created. And so um, takeaways then is that you can break things apart either by using the default settings under this. You can use a combination of the, the shatter effect and pixel poly to create very, you know, 
realistic particle systems, or you can use custom mapping in order to be able to, be able to break things apart in a way that fits your composition.